Okay, the International Writings Change and this particular course is a teacher training program. Only this is a teacher training program because we found that with the International Writing Exchange that's been going on for 11 years, that teachers are not always ready for the program. They have to prepare their students. They also have to prepare themselves in advance so that they know enough about Moodle and how to uh, cater to uh, their students in the Moodle. It's all at a distance. Hello, Nevis. Uh, so the idea of the International Writing Exchange for EVO is to uh, provide teacher training for the teachers. And we're going to continue this so um, you'll be able to join as we go. Um, it's an international group, of course, of teachers. There are teachers from around the globe. I think I counted over 50 countries. And the idea is to teach college-level writing, but also high school, senior high school is fine to through a cultural exchange and the key here is culture the IWE or the International Writing Exchange is able to connect English language teachers and their students from around the world so what happens is the teachers sign up bring their students and then the students collaborate in writing Okay, and I think, Maria, you've been there. You've seen the uh, International Writing Exchange. Right now, it's happening. It's on IT for All, and there are teachers from Germany and students, of course, from Germany, from, um, I believe, China, Hong Kong, and uh, I think Japan. Yes, and Japan right now. And these teachers have been um, part of this program for a number of years. And here's a little history about... Um, the International Writing Exchange. I had the pleasure of meeting the founder of the International Writing Exchange, Ruth Vilmi, after I had been in touch with her and became close friends online. <laughs> um, Ruth and I have uh, known each other since 2003, and we finally met in June of 2014. And we had a whole day together. It was really amazing. I mean, I knew her, so I knew she would be amazing. You know, it's no surprise when you meet someone face to face after you've known them for a while online because they're they're them. Okay, so there's no real surprise, but it's so exciting to finally spend a whole day with um, a very close friend that I'd never see face to face. So that's Ruth, um, and she started the project when she was a teacher. She's originally from the UK. Uh, she's been living in Finland. She got married. She's got one daughter. She's now a grandmother in Finland. She doesn't live in Tampere, but I met her in Tampere. She taught at the college of uh, the University of Helsinki University, and she started the EFL program at the college and the International Writing Exchange in 1993. So actually, it's been 12 years. This will be the 12th year. And um, in 2010, actually 2009, uh, she decided to retire and she didn't know what to do. And I said, let's, I'll continue it because I had a Moodle anyways. Uh, the idea behind the International Writing Exchange, because it's English as a foreign language, but there are native speakers as well from English speaking countries. The idea is to motivate and to... Um, make writing exciting because it's really difficult for many, many uh, foreign language learners. It's also to make it authentic because a lot of uh, schools around the globe, and I can tell you that in um, Venezuela, for example, they don't really speak the language. You know, it takes special teachers like Doris and Evelyn, if you know them, uh, to actually get students at the college, the university, to speak because all they really expect of um, these students is to be able to read texts. They don't have to actually use the language, not the written language and not the spoken language. It's kind of like I learned Latin. You just need to write it and conjugate and things like that that are really not exciting. So the idea behind the International Writing Exchange is to connect with students from around the globe and learn together. Oh, so you know about that, Tom. I thought I was going to step on your foot there. Okay. And 
through authentic subjects, real to life subjects that matter. Of course, the idea is also to uh, bring cultural awareness, and that's when they get aha moments. You know, it's amazing when they connect that they find out, wow, is that what your washrooms look like? I mean, they go into details. And apparently in Japan, there's certain customs with a washroom and they look different. And, and that's what they discuss. They discuss really, really, hello, Brian, amazing topics, even though it's academic writing, but they still connect for uh, cultural uh, awareness and they, they learn from one another. It's also a way to uh, promote peace because uh, there are a lot of countries <laughs> that are at war enemies, in fact. But in the International Writing Exchange, everybody learns together. Nobody really cares. And the governments do not go into a Moodle to check, Tom, who's there and who's not. So basically, um, people from, you know, countries that are at war, literally at war, uh, study together. So that's, uh, that's something that I found really exciting. And that's why I'm excited about the International Writing Exchange, because if we can bring peace through cultural awareness, um, maybe we'll have a better world. Okay, a little bit about this particular EVO, International Writing Exchange. The layout, we'll be discussing that in week one, and the navigation of Moodle, of course. The goals, what are the goals of this course? The uh, the participants will learn to document, and this is where you're going to be coming in. All of you will be helping um, and reflect. They'll be learning about tools, and of course, they'll get a certificate. So this is basically what we're going to focus on right now. The live classes are there under the overview of the course. There are five live online classes. They're at 3 p.m., but apparently the Moodle says an hour earlier. I have no idea why we're trying to fix that. It happens every time we upgrade uh, the Moodle. So yeah, you notice that, which is why I presume a lot of people were waiting to come in at two o'clock. They must have waited for a long time, and I'm really sorry about that. I should have mentioned that it seemed fine uh, with the international, I mean, with the... Um, Evo uh, teachers to uh, teaching EFL to young learners, they were fine with it, and the Moodle for teachers were fine with it, and it was the same. So um, I thought this would work too, but that's okay. You change some, you couldn't change them. There's no way you can change them. What do you mean you change them? You can't. When I wrote three, it said two. Uh, but on Wiz IQ, it was the correct time. So um, it had nothing to do with that, Tom. On the right, where it says the upcoming events, you can't change it. It's automatic. That's where it says, you know, I told them to click on the blue. Well, all the blue says two for each week. You can check it. So um, I'm sorry about that. So it has nothing to do with, um, you know, the we changed it the upcoming events are still wrong. All right, a little bit about breadcrumbs. And um, I know that uh, Ellen was very keen on understanding what this is about. So this is for everyone. You go from right to left. And the course, this is where you stop at the International Writing Exchange for EVO 115. That's where the course is. So you don't go any further because then you're going to go into categories and then the front page of the Moodle. All right, these are things that you know. You know about the editor, but I'm just going to say it. You might notice that the editor comes as one row and then you have to click over here and then it opens up like an accordion into three rows. No, that's another story, Tom, <laughs> about the 12th May and the 13th. That's something else. Um, next. All right. This is uh, week one and the discussions. Okay, there's the introduction 
And there's also a cultural diversity discussion forum. There's an article that you'll need to read for week one, and I'll talk about the badges and certificates and why you might be motivated to do this. In any case, there's reading and writing. Okay, so uh, the questions we'll be discussing cultural diversity. What is culture? There's some questions here, and all the answers are in the article. The article is really, really interesting. It's a current article, so I think you're going to enjoy it. Culture is a very, very hot topic these days uh, because we're getting closer together, but we're also getting farther apart because of misunderstandings. All right, you'll also learn and you'll be uh, passing on the message to the other participants about documenting and reflecting. And this is where, Nevis, you're probably going to be uh, adding the videos that you have already. Uh, the participants will be creating video tutorials using Screencast-O-Matic, MoveNote, Jing for the screen images to cut them up if they wish or something else, and slide speech. Okay, and we'll be going into that in the course. The next activity for week one in preparation for week two, the participants will go into the choice activity. They will need to choose uh, one or more, but what is enough, a tool, and these are the tools, and they're clickable. The PowerPoint presentation is on the site for week one. And they are S'more, I love uh, MoveNote to S'more, which is amazing. So through S'more, Plotagon, MoveNote, Present Me, Slide Speech. These can be accessed on the internet. You can learn about them. You choose one. You'll create a video tutorial explaining to others how it works. So you'll be teaching one another about each of these tools. In addition, you, one of you will create a video tutorial explaining how to add YouTube or Vimeo, which is in the same way, to Moodle. Now this could be added anywhere in any discussion form or any resource or activity. Okay, so wherever you see an editor, you can add YouTube or Vimeo. Another tutorial is the blog on Moodle. One of you will teach the others through the uh, video tutorial how to blog in a Moodle course because the students are going to be using all these tools, so uh, you need to learn how to use them yourself. Next, one of the participants will create a video tutorial on Exibus ePortfolio on Moodle, and another one will create a discussion forums and how everything about discussion forums on Moodle and how they work. Right, so you can choose one or you can choose more than one just for yourself. So that's the choice. The question mark is a choice activity. Students love these activities. You'll be able to create them and I'll explain when. Next is uh, these, okay, checkpoints. You can, either you're able to check them on your own or you have to do a certain uh, task in order to have them checked automatically by the system. In week four, participants are going to move over to a course area where they will be planning uh, activities for their students, reading and writing activities. And all this, of course, is in preparation for the next uh, IWE in the fall of 2015. These are some reflecting tools. S'more is a reflective to uh, tool. It's amazing. It's more than a blog. Of course, YouTube, Vimeo, and blogging on Moodle, these are all ways that you can reflect on what you learn in order to remember. As I said yesterday, instead of taking notes on a piece of paper, 
um, you'll be taking notes online. Okay, so these again are some of the creative video tools that you can create and you can also get your students to create these because this is how they share uh, their cultural uh, lives and things about them, personal things and everyday things. So Plotagon, Plotagon is text and animation. You can create a story. Move Note is PowerPoint, but you need a mic in order to speak. You can also speak with a webcam. Present Me is PowerPoint plus mic. And Slide Speech is Notes. Everything in the notes is spoken through a computer machine. PowerPoint, of course, you can also uh, add audio, but that's kind of boring. All right, activities and resources. Um, most of them will be discussion forums. Uh, participants will learn to team up in groups because on the International Writing Exchange, we group all the students so that they have uh, study buddies and they work on each other's writing. And they only submit to their teachers <laughs> when they've gone through a process of going through the writing collaboratively with their uh, friends from around the globe. So it's a collaborative project. Um, they also blog, and I think S'more is the best way to blog, but it's up to them. Now on Moodle, you can export anything. The discussions, anything on Moodle can be exported out of Moodle into your computer system, and then you can do whatever you want with it. You can also print it, which is really amazing that you can print things very easily from Moodle by going into export. So export is part of all the activities and resources on Moodle. Well, activities, not so much resources. Okay, so this is the plan for week four. In weeks two and three, um, participants will be working on the tools and how to uh, teach each other using uh, the tools. In week four, everyone is automatically enrolled there already, but everyone will get manager rights, not teacher rights, but you'll go directly into managers of a Moodle and you'll have a chance to work individually or with a partner or maybe three people, as many as you want, work together on a plan. Okay, so it'll be reading and writing. You can come up with activities on the Moodle. Of course, everything that you do can also be exported. So it doesn't have to stay on the Moodle. You can take it with you, all your hard work and export it somewhere else into a Moodle, or if you want to do something else with it, that's fine. You can also add it, I believe, to blogs. Okay, so this is a unit planning area for the participants and managers of a Moodle course. Of course, they'll turn on the light, as I say, turn on the editing button and power line, and then they can go in to add an activity or resource and create the unit. They can also go into the blocks. So they'll be able to use the blocks because they're managers. So this is a chance for everyone to actually get a glimpse of what Moodle is like in a crash course. So just a, because um, the teachers, at the International Writing Exchange don't have to know that much. They don't even have to um, have manager rights, but I think it's nice uh, just to get the feel of what you can do in a Moodle course. At the end of each week, uh, participants will get a badge. Okay, this is badge one. And um, you'll be able to go into your profile on the course and see how you can get a badge. And the way you get a badge is by doing the following. First of all, in week one, you have to uh, introduce yourself. And then you have to uh, answer the questions, read the article on cultural diversity, do the choice question, and choose a tool to demonstrate 
in week two. And that's it. Not a lot of work. And you get a badge. Any questions so far? Yes, we're still in week. Well, we're finishing week one now. But this is in preparation for week two. They need to do this before they get into week two. Or uh, it's going to be problematic. So week one is really, really important. It's in preparation for the rest. Two, three is practice with the tools and reflecting. And week four is, and five, of course, is getting ready for the showcase in week five, which is uh, a lesson plan. Brian, you can't, you know why, Brian? Because you must have, um, you were there a while back. You must have gone in with your uh, Facebook account. You need to have your Facebook open and and then refresh the page there. And then you'll be able to go in with your Facebook login. Okay, try that. No, please don't try another, don't, don't create another account. If you have problems and you don't remember, and it's not Facebook, if you didn't log in, I can tell you if you're logged in Facebook or not, then please say lost. Uh, lost password. And then you'll be able to get a new one and then you can change it to what you want. Okay, but make sure that you follow the instructions to the letter. And that you uh, write either your username or your, pa or your email, but not both. Okay, because Moodle can't handle uh, both information at the same time. In addition, of course, you'll get a certificate with the logo. Hopefully, we'll get that logo in there. Um, and the signatures of the presenters. I need to get your, I mean, of the moderators. I need to get everybody's signatures. Right now, I only have my own and Udmila's. It's very easy to get a signature. Uh, if you could send it to me, that will be great. And then your name will appear on the certificate as someone awarding it. Okay, so please get that. Uh, as quickly as you can. Okay, that's for the moderators. So it's a good reason to be a moderator. Um, you don't have to have your real signature, by the way. I know a lot of people don't want to. You can have electronic signature. How many of you have an electronic dictionary? Uh, sorry, electronic signature? Because mine is electronic. That's not how I sign. I do not sign uh, everywhere. Okay, so... You can get one, just look for it online and you can get it. If you have ideas where, you can tell us where. And that's it. I believe we end with the certificate. Are there any uh, questions, comments? Let me go back to uh, the other slide. Any questions? There we go. Of the moderators. Any questions? Oh, hello, Mark. Mark, I see you're here. That's wonderful. People are coming in. No, she's gone. All right. Um, any questions? I can give you the mic. All right. So I'm going to stop the recording uh, and give you the mic if you like.